This is a new test chart I designed. I calibrated it to work on an iPad Pro 1500 nit mini LED screen that can display over 15 stops of dynamic range. It has such a high contrast that I actually have to also use a masked version of the chart without the brightest sections to properly record the dark areas without any lens flaring. All right, let's move on to the tests. These are all the cameras I've tested so far. You can see that the a7S III RAW is easily the noisiest. I'd say the Gemini and C70 are very similar with a possible edge to the C70 in this daylight test. And Komodo is a bit closer to the a7S III, and they both have a bit of a noisy red channel. The main difference I could see between the C70 and the Gemini is that the Gemini has a bit coarser and more colorful looking noise, which is interesting given that it has more pixels. The C70 seems to stay the most neutral at the low end, whereas Gemini seems to have a noisier blue channel and Komodo and the a7S III have a, no have a noisier red channel at this white balance. That brings us to the next test, which is a chart balanced for tungsten. Actually, it's more like 2700 Kelvin. Here's where things get pretty interesting. You really start to see the Gemini's noisy blue channel as the blue channel gets more starved, uh, it has to be boosted at this white balance. Komodo seems to actually overtake Gemini here, where we saw its noisy red channel in the daylight test wanted more light. Now, now it has more red light. C70 is pretty impressive here. It remains really neutral, and it seems to leave all the other cameras in the dust in this warmer white balance. The A7S III seems not to discriminate between white balances. It has a noisy red channel in the last test and has a noisy blue channel here. This next high sensitivity test was only for cameras with a dual native ISO. I'm just looking at how much dynamic range is lost by using a high, low light mode on Gemini or the higher native ISO on the A7S III. As expected, you'll, you'll see the noise creeping into the mid-tones uh, in the high sensitivity modes, but that could just be photon shot noise since there are so many fewer photons reaching the sensor in these modes. Maybe I should have shown the mid middle of the chart in this test. Uh, so there's definitely noise in the eight, eighth stop here. On the tungsten chart, Gemini's low light mode really does seem to help a lot with the blue channel compared to standard mode. This makes me even more inclined to switch to low light mode if I need to use a lower white balance on Gemini. Here's an interesting test I wanted to do um, to take two cameras that I'm the most likely to shoot on and figure out if there is a downside to one or the other if light levels are limited. I stuffed the lens all the way down and the chart brightness is fixed, but the C70 has a speed booster on this test. It seems like there's even a slight benefit to using the C70 in this limited lighting scenario. They're extremely close here, but the C70 noise does seem just a, a little bit less coarse than Gemini. The C70's low light edge is even bigger at a lower white balance here. The noisy blue channel on Gemini just doesn't like low white balances. Uh, then again, you see the downside of the speed booster and the chromatic aberration in those chips on the C70, even with the lens stopped all the way down. But it's not clear to me if that's from the speed booster optics or from using more of the lens image circle, since aberrations usually uh, tend to be much stronger at the edge of the image circle. The last test in this series is just curiosity about the new Canon RAW format. The LT mode is, is only 259 megabits per second, which is incredibly low. It's less than a third of the lowest bit rate available on the Komodo or the Sony ProRes RAW. I've done similar tests on RED DSMC2 Gemini and Helium cameras that have adjustable compression ratios and found they have quite a bit of trouble compressing noise as you increase the ratio. Noise is one of the hardest things to compress by nature, so it's really impressive here that the Canon's LT, which is 10 to 1 compression, appears to handle noise really well. It seems indistinguishable from the ST mode, which is 6 to 1 compression, even, even when pixel peeping at the pixel level noise. That's it for the tests. Subscribe so you'll see when I post the rest of my tests here, and I'm planning to try to test out Raptor and Alexa and a couple other cameras that are really interesting to me with my new chart. Don't forget, you can't really judge noise in a YouTube video since noise is the first thing to go when these get compressed. Uh, download my higher quality version that I'll link in the description if you, if you want to evaluate it yourself, and let me know in the comments if you have any questions since this did get a bit technical.